this is, this is, this is. Buckle up, everyone. It's episode 500 of the Mike Herrera podcast. Joining me today, tonight, whatever, wherever you are in the world or whatever dimension you may reside in, I don't know. It's Bob McKnight, Dimension. producer Bob. Dimension. Producer Bob, everyone. Hey, buddy. Um, so 15 minutes before we're going to start recording, you're going to send me a text and just say, do you have a plan? <laughs> it's yeah. your podcast, man. I'm the guest. What are you talking about? Do you have a plan? Uh, I, I can. You're, I can have. I can have a plan. You're not the guest. What are you talking about? Let's put it. Let's just get that straight right now. You're not the guest. What am I? You're the producer. All right. I guess you want me some produce some things. I, that we... I I thought you were going to produce a show. All right. Let's do it. How about I give you some topics? You pick one, and we'll just go. <laughs> That sound good? Yes, of course it sounds good. But real quick, before we get into your topics, yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we get into your topics, I wanted to invite you to Atlanta, Georgia, because I feel like that's the closest we're going to be to you. You're in the Carolinas. Yeah. Um, if you can get yourself down there, I would love to hang out. Atlanta's going to be good. It's March 15th. We're playing Buckhead Theater. We've played there before. It's a beautiful place. Sounds That's amazing. Sweet, Mike. Yeah. You know, I went to Atlanta, Georgia for the first and only time. Uh, man, it might have been a decade ago. My dad won tickets to see the Atlanta Braves. And uh, they, gave, they gave us five tickets. They put us in a hotel, you know, all that kind of stuff. We just, oh, and I think he, he got a car rental, too. Like it was just all taken care of. And uh, we had to sit up on the deck where they have like the Budweiser, I don't know, restaurant or something like that. I think it's an area that's like cheap to buy seats because everybody was just kind of standing there. But because we had won this prize, we had this like, like roped off VIP section and everybody looked at us the whole time like they were angry. Yeah, because we were comfortable and there were like 200 people just like shoulder to shoulder standing on this ledge trying to watch the ball game, you know, um, now, now you know what it feels like to be me. Yeah. <laughs> comfortable. Dude, yeah, people are mad about it. You know, you changed my life <laughs> and, and the way that I think about concerts. Um, you had me out in New York when you play was December 2nd, 2017. 2018, you played with the Huntingtons, uh, yeah. Slick Shoes, right? Highline Ballroom? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. the show. So you put me in a nice little section. Thank you. I appreciate it. And uh, there was some other person there that I didn't know who they were, but everybody was talking to them like they were they were somebody. Hmm. But, uh, you know, we had a waitress. Like, I could walk over to where the sound guy was, and I was taking video from, like, the side of the stage. And I looked down in the crowd, and I was like, oh, this is so much more comfortable. <laughs> no, it was good, and I really appreciate it. I don't know if I ever thanked you for that. It was it was a fun time. You're welcome. You know, you know, that's the thing is like I enjoy going out into the crowd. Now, I don't necessarily do that at MXPX shows because that would be insane. Uh, I'm a <laughs> plane, but you know, I do it. You know, I go to the Descendant show, go to Bad Religion or whatever. You know, Green Day. Um, even blink, you know, go, go out and walk through the crowd. It's kind of, it's gnarly sometimes, you know, but, um, but that being said, you know, I'm kind of, you know, I almost always have some sort of pass that gets me, you know, back I, to, to me, it's different just cause it's just, it's like work. It's, um, it's like when you work at Walmart, you get to go be in the back of Walmart and do whatever. And when you work at, Whatever, you know, you, you get to go into the kitchen and mess with people. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to mess with people necessarily. Not all the time, sometimes, but yeah, it's a good time. So what else do you remember about that that experience? In Man, um, that was the first time that I saw someone pee on the street just openly. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim West was with me. We hung out with Tim. We hung out with... Um, Oh shoot, man! I'm, I feel so embarrassed. I can't remember his name. Uh, your your buddy, man, the guy you play music with all the time that goes to your stuff sometimes, man. 
Oh, uh, Louis De Fabrizio. Yeah, Louis. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we yeah, hung yeah. out with him. He's a trip, man. He he taught me a lesson about yeah. New York. He was like, "Look, if you're polite, you're rude. You got to move. You got to go." We were trying to like, get out of this crowd. Um, he's he's he was a good dude. If you're polite, he, you're rude. Yeah, if you're polite, <laughs> like if you try to like let somebody by, like no, don't do that. Just go. You got to go. Um, we were standing in line to get into the show, and a beer bottle was thrown from. I don't know, some window seven, eight stores up and, and hit a car. Yeah. And what amazed me about that was nobody reacted. I was like, this is a, this is normal. This is okay here. All right. Um, after you guys got done playing, uh, we got in a cab. So that was my first time in a cab in New York city. And that was, that made my heart race. Like those, those that was nuts. Try a cab in Tokyo. Like going through these little side alleyway streets in Tokyo is kind of gnarly, but uh, I love the just hearing the outside the sort of like is it called would would that be ancillar? I'm not sure. Uh, just experiences outside the show, like mm-hmm. taking the cab for the first time, seeing a beer bottle, seeing somebody pee on the street, a beer bottle hits hits a car. Oh, we went in a tunnel. We had so we went to, mm-hmm. you know, we were going to leave in the morning time, whatever, whatever day that was. And uh, Tim called me or texted me or something. He's like, hey, why don't we just leave tonight? And he gets like car sick. So he has the drive the whole time. And I'm like, yeah, let's. And where are you driving to? Do it. Uh, New Jersey. OK. So our first stop was going to be in Red Bank, New Jersey. We were going to go to uh, Jay and Silent Bob Secret Stash. Uh that so I listen to tell him Steve Dave it's like my favorite thing. What is Jay and Silent Bob's secret stash? It's a comic book store. Comic book store. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. The, you know, <laughs> Kevin Smith owns it. Yeah. Okay. I've heard of it. The, I just yeah, I forget things, and then I I need a reminder. I'm like, oh yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah. So we did that. Uh, we the first hotel we it wasn't a hotel it was a motel. We went to this place. And went in to check in, and I came out. And maybe you know what he's talking about. I wasn't very familiar. And he's like, I don't, I don't know if we should stay here. And I was like, what's wrong? He goes, the doors, they open to the outside or the inside or something like that. And I was like, what, what does that mean? He goes, that office is set up that if there's problems, they can lock that door real fast and people can't get in. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, whatever. Then we get in our room. Dude, It's it was awful it was really it was so sketchy you could tell crimes had been committed there like it was just you could feel the vibe oh yeah this is not a place that is going to be safe Mm -hmm. now me personally i didn't care i've stayed in some sketchy places it didn't really matter to me i was like you know but but tim's like i don't know and he he makes a phone call and he comes back he's like hey i just talked to my wife she rented us a, a room in another place we're leaving and we just we just left i don't even think he got his money back uh, that's I've done that before. I've done but, that uh, in Sacramento. In fact, of, <laughs> he actually took care of the room because of you. I I had called him and I was like, "Hey man, uh, you want to go see MXPX in New York?" I was like, "I'll hook you up with tickets and everything if you take care of like the drive in the hotel." And then I sent you a message and I was like, "Hey, can I get two people in?" And you were like, "Yeah, there we go." So that's how no I kind of worked it out. Good. So I, I appreciate that too. Um. So yeah, we went and. Uh, we went to uh, Jay and Silent Bob Secret Stash. I walked in and really fanboyed out. I got embarrassed. Like uh, there was the guy running the place. His name is Walt Flanagan, and I'm a huge fan. Like I'm just a giant fan. What does and he do? He's he's a podcaster. Podcast. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, the host of Tell Him Steve Dave. So I walk up to him. Oh, he was also uh, there was a show on AMC called Comic Book Men. Yeah, he's, I've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah, he's like one of the main stars. So I walk up to him and he, you know, he introduces himself. He runs the comic book store, mm. and uh, I pay for the stuff and and I walk out and we go to a place called Surf Taco next door, and uh, we ordered some lunch because that's another place that's talked about on Tell Him Steve Dave, and we wanted to just experience those things. And and I told Tim I was like, man, dude, I really chickened out. I wanted to say hi and like I wanted to, you know, just just talk about that stuff, and I just I just didn't. I couldn't. Like, I don't know. It was weird. 
And I think he called me a vagina or something. I don't know. With some harsh words. And I was like, you know what? Let's go back. And I just walked back in there and I walked up to him. And I was like, hey, man, you know, I wanted to say that I knew who you were, but I just, and he's like, I thought, I, I felt it. He goes, I felt it. And we ended up taking pictures <laughs> together and, and stuff like that. So it was a really good time. Yeah. But uh, we got up the next morning and that's when we were going to go into New York. And that was my first time there, only time there. And we had to drive through this tunnel. And we were stopped in it. And I remember just going, we're under the water. Like, if, Yeah, this is if, this might be it. This is like if something bad happened, I'm looking around. And I'm like, we can't get out of here. Yeah, you were in the Holland Tunnel, probably. I guess. I don't or know. Lin- or Lincoln Tunnel. It was, uh, I, rem- I just remember going, this is not, I don't like this. And then we're walking through New York. And I'm, dude, I'm from the country, man. So like, this is, I just don't like, I didn't like it. Every every step I took, I was doing this thing intentionally where when I when I took a a step forward with my right foot, I would take my hand and just touch my wallet just to make sure it was still there. And then when I moved forward with my left foot, I would touch my phone in my right pocket just to make sure it was still there. And that's what I did every step through New York. I'm just a nervous person and I didn't I didn't enjoy it. I enjoyed your show. I enjoyed being there. I enjoyed being with my friend, but the town itself, it's not its not for me. It's kind of interesting how a lot of these shows we do, I mean, I don't know how many people actually live right there. It's just where can you have this rock venue where it's mm-hmm. not going to be shut down constantly or I don't know. It's just where it's going to do well, right? And And a lot of times that means going to a city, going to an urban area where it's zoned like that. You can be loud. I don't know. I don't really know the ins and outs of venue ownership and the business of that, but it is kind of interesting how, especially punk clubs. I mean, we came up in punk clubs and generally we're in theaters these days, theaters are, or, or bigger, but, um, coming up in punk clubs, like you're in the seediest area ever. Like we, we played CBGB back in the day in New York and, we didn't go on until like 2 a.m. Oh, we, we were under, we were like 18 years old. This was like our first year of touring. It wasn't our first tour, but it was our first year of touring. So it was like somewhere in that year, in that span of that year. And we we're just these kids, you know, and just whatever, what we, what we would just do, whatever anybody would tell us to do. So, all right, you're playing it too. We wouldn't argue that. We'd just go, all right, we're playing it too. Instead of like, hey, could we play like at 10? In no, didn't even ask, didn't even think to ask, which is, I wonder where we got, I mean, I don't know, man, like, my my parents must have, they had me, they had me very obedient, because I felt like I was, I mean, I did my fair share of, of, you know, rebelling, let's say, but when it came to music, when it came to, like, being in a band, we were eager to do whatever we could. So if people asked us to play a show, we'd say, yes, let's do it. So I think it comes a little later once you start learning, oh, maybe you should ask. And then you learn some of those things. That's just basic business, whatever. I don't even know if it's business thing. It's like life. If, if you, you know, if, if it's possible, you might as well ask for a better slot. Um, and that applies to so many things in life, doesn't it? It does. Like, do you like do your you boy realize... getting the getting the other room from from his wife? Like, hey. <laughs> do you realize like what level you're on when it comes to business, or is it just it's normal and you don't think about it? Um, what do you mean by that? What's the what well, level? Like, so one of the benefits that I get for working for you is that I get a little bit of insight on how you handle things. Mm. Um, I don't get as much inside of it is that I'd like to because I mean I know my place I understand that the podcast is, is my lane um but you share information with me every now and then and and you'll tell me about some stuff that you're doing I'm like holy moly that's really well thought out like that's like it's a really good business move and for me when I was doing band stuff it was like book a show have fun you know like we didn't put much thought into anything other than like we got to figure out how to get the band there because we didn't have like, you know, you know, this crew and stuff. So yeah, like getting to hear some of the things that you do behind the scenes, I'm like, wow, like your work ethic is through the roof. Like, I don't know if people realize that, like 
there's got to be people out there that look at you and they're, you know, they're, you're, you're their favorite band and, and whatnot, but they don't realize what you actually do like day to day. And when I started working for you, I started seeing some of that stuff and I was like, oh, this is next level. And that's when I started changing some things about me and the way that I handle stuff because I knew that I wouldn't get get better, right? You know who Tony Robbins is? I do, of course. So I, I, I really enjoy his stuff. I never go into like a seminar or anything. That's that's wildly out of my uh, <laughs> capability. Yeah. But uh, man, he talks about how he likes to surround himself with better people. Yes. That shades time off of how long it takes to learn stuff, right? Like he doesn't want to spend 10 years learning something. He wants to be friends with someone who spent 10 years learning something so he can learn all their tricks in a very short period of time. And that's sort of what I've been doing with you sort of. Sure. So I, I, that's I, great. I, was, just, I was just curious if like, if you felt it, cause I know in, in my real job, um, I'm on a certain level and I, I run, you know, I run things the way that I know need to be ran and, and I handle myself the way that I'm supposed to handle myself. And, and every now and then I'll, I'll catch employees and they're like, oh, wow, he's like, he's really on top of this. And for me, it's, it's not that I'm just doing what I know needs to be done. Sure. I think it's the same with me in a lot of ways. Um, everybody, whenever you're at a level, you know, that's just where you're at. So like when people make more money, they usually end up spending more money. So like as MXPX grows, we hire more people because there's more stuff to do and therefore we're spending more money and then we have to make more money because we're spending more money. It's like a, it's like a cycle that kind of just perpetuates. Um, I haven't quite gotten past that as far as in the comfortable range. So me, I feel like some days I feel like I'm killing it. Other days I feel like I'm lazy and I'm not doing anything right. And, and a lot of times, you know, when I'm killing it, I'll find out I did all the wrong things, but at least I felt good at the time, you know, like all of the spectrum happens with me in my head. Um, same as anybody, you know, you, you, you know, there's, uh, there's a, there's a lot of artists out there that just don't really act real, but everybody's real in some ways, right? Like, but, but there's, you don't always see that online. And so I don't know if it's a good or bad thing to even know that, to even realize that. I don't think it, it's almost like whatever you really care about, you're going to pay attention to. And some people just don't care enough to like scrutinize whether an artist is being very real. And so like for me, I'm always trying to be real. Like I come from punk rock. It's in my bones. It's in my ethos. It's what I know. And being punk rock is about being real. And so I, I, sometimes I even have to fight that to choose a better option, you know, an option that is going to be better. Maybe I I guess you could say business wise, but I'm not always thinking business. I'm thinking, what can we do? That's cool. What can we do? That's going to keep people interested in what we do because it's all about attention. It's all about, we're not competing with other bands. We're competing with, every other person in the world literally like when we be when, yeah it's wild isn't it when we came up as a band we had tons of fans that were inspired to start playing music and some of those fans a lot of those fans started their own band started their own project and didn't have time to keep up with what mxpx was doing and that happens with everybody. It happened with me. I mean, I'm sure if I hadn't picked up a bass and a guitar when I did, I would have kept listening to a lot of the bands that I was listening to even more. Right. So you kind of like, you know, you give and take, it's like, I, I, I took from, from, you know, bands that inspired me and I give and they, and, and bands take from me, you know? So like, it's in a, it's okay. I don't know. It's a symbiotic relationship in a way. Yeah, but it's going to be different. It's going to be different for everybody. Like that was kind of your experience, right? Like you think to yourself, if I wouldn't have picked up a bass, I would have listened to a lot more, right? Right. For me, it's the exact opposite. If I wouldn't have picked up a bass, I wouldn't have listened to more. Like uh, I, I was in a weird situation where... 
I was listening to a type of music that was not necessarily what all my friends listen to or the people that I would associate with listen to. And I kind of, I didn't get forced out of what I was listening to. I was just hanging around with people that were listening to something different. And then it just kind of, it kind of creeped on me, right? It creeped on, yeah. yeah. Rubbed off on you. And then, you know, obviously I've told this story actually on your show. My, you know, my wife, the girl at the time, she listened to you guys. So I was naturally like, well, I need to listen to them too. I got to make sure I'm on the, (laughs) I'm on the level, right? And then uh, once I started playing music, I, I actually played in a punk band before I even listened to punk music. Mm. It was just somebody was like, "Hey, let's start a punk band." I was like, "Okay, let's do that. I can I can play a bass. Like let let's go." Yeah. Um. So the more shows that we played and the better we got, the more I started listening to other stuff, and that's sort of how it broke out for me. Um. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was my experience then, and now with the internet, now with just every everybody has a voice now even if it's not reaching you know everywhere it's just it's some it's in your ecosystem right it's too many voices so there's a lot of voices out there and and now it's freaking gross, it's man. it's it's that thing what i described of of being inspired by something and then starting your own thing and being occupied by that notwithstanding your your story which okay opposite but but for most people just any time you have an interest in something and you start doing it on your own, it's gonna take it's gonna take time away from something else. You know, maybe your friend that doesn't want to play bass or guitar in your band, your stupid band. Maybe you don't hang out with them as much because they're not doing what you're wanting to do. Right. And as a kid, I I was very focused. I still, as an adult, I'm very focused on what it is I want to do. And if you want to hang out with me you probably should be doing something along the lines of what I'm doing. So like whether it's music, <laughs> video stuff, podcasting, like all my friends oh work my with me. God. You know what I mean? <laughs> what, does that, did that come off wrong? Because no, it came my... off exactly the way that it should with someone who had a life like yours. Ah, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Maybe. I mean, I mean, how old were you when you recorded your first album? Um, poking at you. Let's see. That was 1994. Uh, 17, maybe 17. And it did well. Maybe yeah? 16, 17, somewhere in there. It did well. I mean, I don't know what well is, but at the time it did good for us. It did good for, okay. like, you know, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't even really, I think you're so far from what us normies think as well. Um, probably sold 60,000 copies or something like okay. that. Or, perfect. Uh, my first CD that I put out, we sold, I don't know, maybe 50, <laughs> 60 copies. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, a different, it's, it's a different world, homie. Um, when you sell 60,000 <laughs> copies of anything. I don't even know create, if that's the right number, though. It could be 30,000. It could be. Could be. 20, but I don't Let's know. just say 30,000. Let's just say 30. Okay. You sell 30,000 copies of something because what you created reached those people and they were like yeah let's let's buy this you're going to unintentionally start having people now that just agree with you whether what you're saying is is good or not so as yeah. a 17 year old i can only imagine that that must have been a very difficult kind of thing to navigate through right like, i don't think i understood what was going on i just I kind of have my, like I said, I'm I'm focused. And so whatever I'm hearing the most, I'm going to sort of gravitate towards that. So I I was in some ways fairly naive. Uh, I'll give give you that, you know, when I was young. Well, yeah, you were. Um, And easily manageable. Um, As long as you don't see the, the key to me was if you, if you go against me, if you like are really harsh, I'm going to go the opposite. Right. But if you like, give me some honey, give me some sweetness, I'm really easy to get along with. So people would, would, would recognize that. And, and, and I think a lot of artists are like that, you know, they just, you're probably like that, to be honest, like you, 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 
if somebody's going to give you shit, you're going to be pushing back that much harder, right? But if they're given, chill given the and they ask you the right way, you're like, all right, cool, no problem. You should have, you know, so I, I think a lot of artists are like that. And I didn't understand, even though it was a, a small scale of people that were coming up, it was enough to make me feel kind of weird, you know, because people are yeah. constantly like, you're, you're the best. And it is great to hear. Like, I'm not saying like, don't tell me I'm the best, please do. But, but, but as a kid, you know, you hear like this, that you get weird ideas in your head about what life is going to be like. And to be honest, life was great. I mean, <laughs> you want to know what it was like being a rock star? It was great. Everybody yeah. should do it. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we worked our asses off, but like we were going to do that no matter what. So like the fact that it actually worked and people came to shows and, and you know, we, we used to play the Metro all the time in Chicago. We might play there again someday, but uh, we just, I was just thinking about those shows. Like we would sell that place out all the time. And that place in particular, our bus would be like on the side and somehow they just let all these people surround our bus. So all these fans are outside our bus. So when we come out the show, out the, the, you know, after the show, we come out to our bus, there's a sea of fans all waiting to get autographs, take pictures. At that time, it was point and shoot cameras. They had it shows all the time. But like, little flashes kind of like go off in my mind of, you know, those, some of those early times where it felt really overwhelming and it wasn't a bad thing. I don't feel traumatized at all. Um, but it's more of like, just a, like a little imprint or like a little stamp, you know, it's like a, a feeling that, that adds to your personality. And I think that's, that's what happens to kids when they, when they go through, fame at an early age is sure. is you know some of them have really horrible stories you know where they were abused and uh, taken advantage of i, I would say I, i'd say we were taken advantage of because we were young but it all worked out okay it wasn't taken advantage of in a physical way it was uh in a business way you know people making money off you using you as a cash cow using your credit card as a personal credit card you know like and me not knowing that I should check the balance and look Ooh. at the charges, you know, like things like that. Like I still don't do that, by the way. Somebody else does that now, but that's that's but, actually what I do for a living. Is I <laughs> I check up on people. Yeah, you got to check up on people. Yeah. yeah, and 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 that's it. Is is um, you know some of the the craziest stories about people getting their fortune taken from them are from family members and. I've been lucky because, you know, my mom has been helping out with the band for so long and, and she's proved trustworthy. You know, she's had plenty of chances to embezzle thousands and thousands of dollars. Uh, I say that millions of dollars, probably not quite millions, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I've been lucky, but like somebody like Dane Cook, you know, his brother took millions from him and he didn't know. And he was just like, I'm going to go get some money. Wait, where's my money? So, you know, we've had that happen to us on a smaller scale. Like our credit card has been run up, things like that. Um, $30,000 checks, not cash, just sitting there. Oh, by the time we get it, it's years later and it's expired. Things like that. Like, Oh, no. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. I mean, we've we've been... We've been given fake wire transfers from promoters in foreign countries where we get home from the tour and we're like, wait, what do you mean the money's not there? We got the wire transfer, you know, money's not there. Like, you can't trust a lot of people in this business part of the world. Like, in, 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 the, in the band to fan in the band to fan part of the world, that's Ooh. great. We, we haven't had a lot of mishaps with fans at all like people have been so cool they don't rip us off they they treat us with respect but when it comes to the business end 
Yeah, that's a whole different story, you know. Um, you got you have to almost be an asshole to get business done right, and that means you have to have a sh a, a, a manager or somebody in charge that can be a hammer, because if you don't, they walk right over you, and that's something that I couldn't be for myself. Uh, you know, it's 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 I don't really know, man. You're pretty different. stern with me sometimes. I mean, I I. I Imagine how how ni how stern yet nice I am, and I'm and I am not the nicest person, by the way. People think I'm super nice because I I I do act nice. I'm I'm warm with people, and I try to be open. But when it comes to business or this or that, like I want I want people to be treated right, and so I also don't want to be treated wrong. So I want to be I want a, a fair deal. I want a deal that that I agree to, and then I also want to be able to pay my people, my team, more money than they expect, and more money than they're probably even worth. Maybe there's a few of them that actually we don't pay enough, but uh, but you know it all evens out in the end. You know it, it's it's uh, like I say, you know all the things, all the mistakes we made back in the day, trusting record labels, trusting managers um have led us to a place that's much better you know we're really happy with where we are and it's not ever perfect we always have to adapt adapt the business plan adapt what we're doing with the band um we try not to just do things for no reason i know people like just random content but we we really try to have a a, a reason to waste your time right so if we're going to like put it out online um there's a reason we're doing it. And even if it, it doesn't seem like there's a reason, there probably is a reason. And it's it's all encompassing, you know, as far as you were talking about business plans and whatever. I mean, it's not, like I said, it's not always about business, but it's about life. It's about, okay, how do we move the ball forward? How do we continue to do what we love to do uh, in this ever, increasingly hostile environment hostile towards independent businesses okay. hostile and uh, towards diy type uh musical acts um you know we do work with live nation and big corporations like that and you have to be a shark to get in that shark tank you know you got to be a snake to get in this in the snake pit whatever you whatever analogy you want to use um because they, like I said, they'll just walk all over you. And a lot of the success we've had has been on the band front, being open and honest with our fans and only telling them things that we really want them to know or hear and not trying to waste their time with a lot of extra randomness, you know? Um, yeah, that's great. And then, and then on the others, on the business side, just trying to do things that other people um, haven't done as much yet. Um, we try to be on the cutting edge of that. We live on the edges of, of uh, <laughs> take that clip, um, the edges of, of marketing and all that. And always looking for something, something new ideas, but at the same time, not getting too sucked into the trends. Um, we don't play the game of just leveraging our audience to make money on the algorithms. You know, uh, we truly are just old school trying to sell records and trying to sell tickets to shows. Like that's what we're trying to do. We're and and our social media is is a way to let people know, hey, we got new merch in the store, mxpeaks.com. Hey, we got tickets up, mxpeaks.com. Whatever it is, and um. I don't know. I mean, it's simple, but I think keeping it simple is is a way that I can uh, understand what I'm doing instead of getting too out there. I mean, we we have a lot of different avenues of how we make revenue, what we pay attention to, and the the uh, the actual answer is to continue strengthening more and more of those revenue streams because 
some of those rev revenue streams do go away and have gone away in just three years. You know, one of our one of our main ways we made money on on streaming has kind of like dipped way down. So you got to find other ways to bring other things up because nothing really lasts forever. You get you get a good run over here. And then that dips down as you get another good run over here. So live shows, another really hard thing, hard way to make money is doing live shows, which most people are like, what? That doesn't seem right. seems like most people make money on live shows and not on streaming. Oh, that's true. And it's actually just as hard, if not harder, to make money on live shows these days because of the inflation that's happened over the last couple of years, because everything has gone up wages haven't gone up um bands are asking for more money not really getting it some are some are um but you know that increase already happened right when people came back from after covid so when when shows started back up the ticket sales were miserable um if you'll remember we didn't do a show the whole year we waited a whole year till after everything was back open until doing a show because we wanted to see what was going on sure enough it was not great and it's taken a while to come back the concert industry is just always kind of up and down and it's always it's always cutthroat because these people make their money on volume we make our money on more like event type things you know we do our weekends and we do albums and we do big launches and um rather than just doing bulk stuff everything's a little more boutique with mxpx so um but i think you know that's because we look at our data and we adapt to that now do i sit there and look at numbers all day no i'm i'm more on the creative end doing videos editing song you know playing music practicing writing songs podcasting now and again um putting set lists together we have practice going on we're putting together the studio upstairs downstairs it's been constant changes here in the studio so there's there's always things going on and not a lot a lot of it is is always something that's like okay let's document this i mean sure if we wanted to spend another 30 grand we could probably get everything that i do throughout my day documented and edited like uh but there's got to be a real reason to do that and um it'd be great but there's there's got to be a reason to ex to spend that much money you know that's a lot there's a lot going on so you know just i'm just spending time on on building this live stream studio back up it's been fun so how old are you now oh you don't want to know how old do you think i am I think you are 27. Mm -hmm. Aren't we coming up on uh, the one-on-one uh, -on -one boss, you know, talks as employee thing? Yeah, 27. Um, no, you're, you're 47. You're, you're you're not 47. I am. Are you 47? I am. Good for you, you big old rock star man meat piece of work you are. That's good, dude. Well, well done. I God, I look older than you do, and I'm still in my 30s. Jesus. I don't know. I think it's everybody looks different to themselves. You know, you look at yourself in the mirror, you yeah. you see yourself differently than I see you. I see you as a young sprightly young lad, young punker. Oh, you think I'm sprightly? Sprightly. Okay. Sprightly. Yeah, is that a word? You got to be careful, man. Like when you say stuff, like I don't think you realize how much power your words have. You <laughs> you referred to me one time as Bob Beanbag McKnight. <laughs> And your fans called me that for almost a year. Really? I don't yeah. even remember that. Yeah. Was, you named an episode after it, dude. Uh, I yeah, still don't said, remember like, that. Like, that is something that I dealt with for a year after you and I had a conversation. That's amazing. So you said you, said you were 17 when uh, the album came out, started doing good. You're 47 now. Yeah. You spent just decades of hearing people just go, Oh, you're amazing. You're great. You're wonderful. I love your music. You changed my life. Like all these good things and bad things. What is you're that? terrible. You things. suck. Not you're, you're, you know. that, that doesn't make a difference to what I'm getting at. So screw the bad things. All right. Don't read those comments. Right. Cool. Well, yeah. Um, so man, what does that do 
differently to somebody's confidence versus someone who didn't experience what you do. So what do you get embarrassed over? Like what, what, what daily thing or something in your life that you're like, Oh, I don't want to do that in front of people. Like, what is that for somebody like you? Mm. I still have to like prepare to perform. I got to prepare to talk, prepare to be in public. Um, what I mean by that is just mentally a little bit, right? Like mentally, uh, and physically, if it's like a performance, if I'm doing MX Peaks, of course, yeah, I warm up and all that. But, but I think just on a daily level, I still like if I'm just going to the studio and I'm just working by myself and I'm not going to see anybody. It is just like anybody else. I might be in sweatpants. <laughs> I might be in sweatpants and a hoodie doing whatever. Nobody ever going to see me. I can't sing at all right now. If you ask me to, I mean, I probably could, but my voice would be, you know, tight and not warmed up and not open and not ready. And, um, so yeah, I mean, I'm just like a person like anybody, you know, I just, everybody's got something that's wrong with them. And, you know, for me, it's, it's like, I'm, I'm one of those, like, what do they call it when it's, you're an introvert, but you're also a part-time extrovert. Like you, you I'm both. I think I, I might have that actually. I'm both because like I can be, and I enjoy being around people, but I need time alone as well. So I need to like take breaks yeah. from people. Like a lot of kids do. A lot of kids like will go into their room and just chill like that's me that's that's i've always done that back when we were you know when whenever we're like on a bus we have our our bunks i'll just go into my bunk and listen to music chill write in my journal whatever right read um and then you're done with that and you, you okay you get back up and you go talk to people but um so what you're saying is normal thing normal things don't embarrass what do you, what what because if what's I a ask, normal thing if i if i <laughs> exactly that's the point i'm trying to make <laughs> no uh if i you know if i just asked any any anybody else you know just not on on your level like what is something day to day that might embarrass you they might say something like uh oh well i'm overweight so i don't wear stripes cuz that makes me feel weird okay you know like uh oh i don't like uh i don't know making left turns in traffic i feel you know anxious about it um, mm. I asked you this question and you're like, you know, I, I got to make sure I'm prepared to speak in public. <laughs> like, it's a different life that you led, man. Like it's, it's wild. And I'm so interested and, and happy to know you because of it. Like, it's something that I didn't get to experience. Like that's, it's, it's something else. Yeah. I don't even, I guess I don't quite understand the, yeah, I don't understand. I just feel like I'm weird because I'm weird and not because the music stuff or, or being in the public eye kind of like like i said it's a, a, on a tiny scale yeah. you know but it still affects you a little bit because you have it, a ton of like in my in my mind there was a sea of people every night on tour and there was actually probably hundreds of people and to me that's a sea of people um all like kind of digging what you're doing. It's so, it's so weird because I realize I'm not the best at what I do. Like I'm not the best bass player. I'm not the best singer. I'm not the best songwriter, but I'm the best MXPX guy, right? Like, well, oh, maybe Yuri, maybe you Yuri just, is actually. You just, really? You just look at everybody <laughs> else in your band and be like, ah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like for, as far as bass playing, but yeah. Um, you get what I'm saying. Like, I'm just, I'm only good at, player. I'm only good at doing me. I'm only good at being me. Um, well, that's the root of my question that I'm asking you. Y you being you, you had a different opportunity to be you than a lot of other people, right? Like, unfortunately, I feel like I didn't really start embracing who I was until I was like 35, 36. You hit this album at 17 you've got people loving you which means you get to really be who you are and you don't have to worry about like normal things um so like a, a phase that i'm going through which you were kind of a part of this is just wearing weird glasses mm. i i do it because it looks weird 
Mm-hmm. And I don't know, there's something about that that attracts me, right? But I didn't do it my whole life because I was like, I don't want to be weird. I don't want people to think I'm weird. You know, I've got a, I've got a life to live. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I, you're I very wanna, I want to say that when I was younger, I didn't have the bliss you're thinking of. You know, I didn't have the everything's cool. I don't have to worry about anything. I didn't worry about money. I didn't worry about, um, the future. Um, that was definitely probably the best part about everything I was going through was just not where I was only worried about what was happening tomorrow. Like yeah. we got a show tomorrow. All right. I make sure I, you know, I didn't always make sure I didn't get hung over, but, um, you know, whatever it is, you know, like, so let's prepare for the week, but that's about it, you know? And, and I, I went through like little phases of, I would look back on the 10 years prior, you know, once I turned 30, you know, I was in my thirties, I'd look back and go like, I don't even know who that guy was. Like I, I didn't pay attention to much. I didn't do a lot of work. I didn't, I wasted a lot of time. That's what I was thinking, you know? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, but you look what you did. You know, I didn't, I didn't do that. I didn't, I didn't go, you, you accomplished this. You did all this. I, th- I just thought to myself, all right, now let's get to work. Let's really do something in my thirties. And, and, um, and then of course, part of my thirties were tumble down were like doing solo tours, doing a lot of scrounging around um, because the music business had collapsed. Record sales had all gone down for everybody on the planet. Uh, Napster was a thing, all that. And then finally, you know, as as the music business rose out of the ashes, even even live shows were down at the time. People weren't promoting, weren't putting money into shows. When I got back up from that. It's a whole different business there too. So like things have changed so many times throughout my career that it wasn't just early days were easy, blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, they were easy because I was so young. I didn't have any bills. I had maybe a cell phone bill. That's literally it. I lived with my parents uh, for at least the first four or five years of the band. Um, and And then you have, you know, early adulthood, Life's still good. We're, you know, we're all over the world. Life's always been good, by the way. But, you know, things started to, to die down after, you know, Napster and record sales were not good. Um, we were trying to figure out, like, okay, how did we get here, you know? Yeah. Um, a lot of, in a lot of ways, we were this punk band that became this rock band that that was struggling in the record label industry because we couldn't find somebody that was really there to champion us. Our, our champion, Larry Weintraub had been fired. Um, there was so many firings and, and just, you know, all these employees being let go from the record labels because nobody was selling records anymore. So, um, yeah, A&M records was promising when we signed to them, when we signed for slowly going the way of the Buffalo, but like, you know, two records later and it was all different people. These people were vapid. They were everything we didn't like about Hollywood in the industry. You know, Ron fair, I'll say was, was our a r guy. We did not agree with most of what he said and thought, and it just didn't work great, you know. And that's that's one of the big reasons why that record just, even though it sold a, a bunch of records, it it didn't do as well as we wanted. It didn't do as it didn't go as big as what we wanted. Um, still a hugely popular record, uh, numbers wise for MXPX, but um, our career. And then we went back, you know. We we decided let's be a punk band and let's go indie. We, we signed a side one dummy. And then from there we went to tooth and nail records, got back a piece of publishing, got back all our publishing really. Um, you know, and here we are, we've, we've built a bunch of, you know, the last, I don't know, three, four, five releases we've done have all been independent. And that has been what's kept us afloat being, owning our own masters on a bunch of albums and, and singles and things we've released 
and having the fact that that streaming came about a new revenue stream you know it's not the only thing that keeps us afloat it's just it pays some bills you know but if you have that and you have this and you have that you can make it work and another great thing is you know doing our own merchandise you know mxpeaks.com the reason i talk about it so much is because it's literally that's a family-owned store it's my mom and pop it's like the corner store but for mxpeaks products so let me do let me do let me stop you and do a real life commercial for your merch store, okay <laughs> this is this is legit this is not scripted this is a real thing you sent me two pairs of the mxpx socks <clears throat> bro hands down the most comfortable socks i own like a lot of times when you buy like you know funny socks from different places that have like printed stuff on them they're just they're kind of cheap those socks that you guys are selling are not cheap like they're thick they're comfortable they're fun to walk on like the, thank you like they're they're amazing socks do you do you still sell them up pimping something that you don't You're have welcome. anymore no we got socks we always have socks we um you know if we sell out of one type we get a new design in and we've got we've had like three or four, probably four or five different designs. So we have yeah. got Find a Way Home socks in the store right now, and maybe some other ones. I'm not sure. I don't have the Find a Way Home ones. I've got the uh, like purple ones. Yeah, the, you have the purple the ones. numbers on the back. Oh, do you have the uh, Find a Way Home ones are purple? They're not Find a Way. They might be Find a Way Home. I don't know what they are. Dude. You might have the 30 year ones as well. They say uh, the MXPX across the front. And they've got like numbers on the back. They all have numbers and MXPX Whatever. all over. But they're, yeah. dude, they're so comfortable. I wear them every week. Like awesome. I definitely wear them every week. Awesome. Thanks, so Bob. If people like socks, they should go buy them socks. Go buy them socks. Them socks. They're fantastic. <laughs> All right. What did you? Uh, is there is there anything else you wanted to get to before we wrap? Um, uh, yeah. You got some topics. I I do have something that I've been waiting to talk to you about for a very 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 long time. All right. Uh, did you ever watch? Um, it's been so long since I watched. I don't remember the name. That super famous show on HBO about the dragons and knights and whatnot. Um, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Did you ever watch that? Yes, I did. Okay, so you you know about it. All right. Oh yeah. Uh, let me tell you a story about me and my wife before I get into why I'm upset with you. Love it. Um, <laughs> so we tried for a couple years to have kids. We were unsuccessful, had some miscarriages, things like that. Um, but we finally, you know, we finally got pregnant with twins, actually. And we were watching Game of Thrones. Loved it. Loved it. We were watching it all the time. And uh, Katie was real pregnant. And we watched an episode, and forgive me if I don't have the complete details, but there were two families. They they were angry with each other about something, and, it, and the episode made it seem like, hey, we're going to work things out. So they had this big dinner, and they all got together. You know what I'm talking about? I do. And there was a woman who was either a queen or a princess or somebody, and she was real pregnant. And someone walked up behind her and started stabbing her in the stomach. Spoiler alert. From what, 20 years ago? Not yeah. <laughs> it was a long time ago. That was the last episode of Game of Thrones that we ever watched. It's and a pretty good one. The reason was because we had tried so hard to get pregnant that when we saw that happen, we were both like, oh, oh. Like, we've had babies die, and yeah. we just watched that, and, like, it was tough, right? It was yeah. tough. Yeah. And then we had the twins, and it was tough. We didn't have a lot of support, um, so it was really just us, right? Um, we didn't, you know, we would have loved to have had a, a lot more people with us trying to help us through it. And we had family, and everybody was nice and stuff, but, like, we didn't really have anybody stay with us. You know what I mean? Like one of the things that my wife went through that a lot of people don't even know is she had a, a C-section, right? Well, I had to go back to work and she was by herself and she couldn't pick the babies up. Yeah. So like when they were asleep in the crib, one of the things that we had to do was like we put a slide on it to help her get the babies out of the crib because we didn't have anybody staying with us. To like help her and I had to go back to work or we were gonna you know lose everything right? yeah 
So it was just a crazy thing. And because it was so hard and so stressful, we all we just stopped watching things that were tense. Because when we watched TV, it just had to be something lighthearted. Mm-hmm. And it never really changed. Like yeah. we always just like watch cartoons or kids movies or, or whatever, because when we watch something, it's got to be something to kind of level us out because our, our life is so intense. Like uh, just like today, like my day was get up at you know five o'clock this morning, uh, get to work. As soon as work's over, I had ball practice. Um, but I've got three kids that are playing on two different teams. So I went first. My wife went second. She took the twins. I took the six-year-old. I, I, I'm helping coach the baseball team. Then I got to get home, get him fed, get him showered. And then they come in. We got to get them showered, get into bed. Then I'm, you know, I'm doing this podcast. So it's just that's how our life is, just popping constantly. So I don't watch. I don't do anything now that brings my intensity level up. I've got to. I've got to ingest things that bring it down. Like I I listen to comedy podcasts. I don't listen to murder podcasts. You know what I mean? Because that's not good for me. But I like the stuff before I had kids. It was nothing but zombie movies and horror movies and everything. And that all kind of went away. Well, that brings us to May 19th, 2023. Do you remember that day? The conversation we had? Because I remember it. Um, I will remember. I'm sure. I sent you a message and I was like, hey, I accidentally played for an extra month of Audible. What are you reading right now? Because I knew you were into a lot of stuff. And I was like, and then maybe when we do our next podcast, we can talk about it. And you sent me some examples of our, you know, you sent me some things you were into. And do you remember what I went with? Do you remember this book? Yeah. uh, Yeah. The Ascension, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, I listened to that entire book. Just so you and I could talk about it. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. And tell everybody if you finish that book. <laughs> <laughs> Let everybody know, Mike. Uh, I did not finish that book. But you, you know, know what? How goddamn stressful <laughs> that book was. I I was reading that and I was like, I can't get into this thing. It the 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 reason why I sent you it is because I had just started it and the idea of it was really cool. It was I a cool imagine idea. Trying to actually read it, but the but it was just in, it was it was weird. It was dumb. So um, my wife was like, "You don't have to finish it. Nothing. There's no payoff. Ditch it." And so that's why I didn't finish it. Oh, she finished it. Oh, she finished it. Yeah, you Dude. can talk to her about it. Oh, um, I don't want to talk to her about it. It was, so it, it, you should have told me nothing exciting. Like send me some book ideas. Nothing exciting. <sighs> because man, well, I'm the same way with podcasts. I don't want to murder podcasts. I don't want to hear about people getting murdered. It's always too. It's too much for me. And that changed at some point. I think I don't know why it changed, but I think it changed somewhere. Somewhere when I had kids. Honestly, I mean, yeah. I don't know what it is. And yeah. and I know there's plenty of people that have kids that can watch a horror movie and I can watch a horror movie. I just don't choose it. I guess. I don't know. I choose comedies and dramas. I love dramas. I love, uh, political dramas. I love house of cards is like one of the best TV shows ever house of cards. And that's a little intense. That's a little intense. I do too, but I'm so drawn to it. I'm so drawn to knowing I am not drawn to any of it things, but (laughs) I'm drawn to knowing things, you know, whatever. I, what are you gonna do? It's it, man, it I can't, <laughs> dude. I can't stand it. Like I, so much so that <sighs> if I don't allow it on my podcast, and mm-hmm. if you were on our show and you start talking about po- politics, I'd be like, no, no, we're not moving forward. Like I just, I hate it. I, I tell you, you what, get political, we'll do, huh? Okay. We'll, we'll do, we'll do a my career exclusive. Are you ready? I'll give my political opinion. Okay. All right. Um. This is what I want everybody to do. You want to know who to vote for when, when it comes to this presidency, these the, the Biden versus Trump era? I'm going to give, every, give everybody my opinion on what okay. I think people should do. I think you should go find somebody in your life right now that's 75 years old and just go stay with them 24 hours a day for five days. And then you think to yourself, should that person be running a country? It's All out right. of control, man. Like, that is wild. Both of those dudes are way too old. 
Like it's nuts. And too old. And, Both of them too old. I think Biden's way too old. Trump's up there. For um, you and I to get into an argument and like let that affect our lives because you like Trump or you like Biden and I like the other person is ridiculous. I'm just going to, I mean, I know we're not supposed to be too open about who we're going to vote for. I'm not going to tell who people who I'm going to vote for, but I don't like either of them. So there you go. (laughs) But I never have. I never, I never have been. Uh, I guess I was more democratic maybe 10 years ago, you know, like when Obama was in, but even then it was a little random. Like, yeah, I've just never been like a left or right guy, even before it was divided. Like even before the country was divided, I was still more of an independent. I just wasn't, I, it, it's a rough one, man. It is rough. It, Let me explain our country is in a lot of trouble because we don't have good leadership on either side. Done. How terrible of, a, of an American I feel like I am when it comes to politics. Left, right independent i honestly don't even really know the difference in the stuff yeah that's how far away from it i am i just i can't stand things that make people not like each other and i've just seen Mm. this country ripped so far apart because of politics and i'm just like y'all know he really ain't in charge right like we have so many checks and balances that that person's just kind of i mean they got power for sure but we made it so that they didn't have an ultimate power Mm -hmm. right like have you ever seen that movie with uh joe pesci he's like a bum heart in harvard oh um, dang i know what you're talking about yeah i don't remember anything about it but whatever well there's a scene in that movie where he he goes into a college class with brandon frazier and uh, he's a very smart guy, but nobody really knows it because he's just like a bum or whatever. Mm-hmm. And he said something in that movie that just like stuck with me so much. He was like, one of the great things about America and when we wrote, you know, our documents and what everything's going to be based around, they left a place for us to change things because they were smart enough to know that they were going to make mistakes and that times were going to change and we needed to adapt to it. And that's, what's beautiful about what we have and to see everyday people arguing with each other over it is, is nuts to me, especially when most of them don't even have the background to be even commenting on what that situation is. You know, like when someone came up to me during the pandemic and, and if they said something like, Oh, you have to wear a mask because of this reason, this reason, this reason, or someone came up to me and was like, Oh, don't wear a mask because of this, this, and this. I'm just like, you work at Walmart. Yeah. What are you, what are you talking about? That's all turned out, turned out to be a lie. You know, Fauci was lying. Dude, bam, I wore, bam. I wore a mask, but it was because I didn't know what was going on and I wasn't assigned. To it. Sure. Maybe early on, we didn't know, and so be cautious. But that what, was my deal. I was like, I'm just yeah. going to put a mask on until we figure out what's really happening because I don't believe anybody. <laughs> like, I don't yeah. trust anybody. Do you, what do you think about Robert F. Uh, F. Kennedy Jr.? I mean, I think he's a person. He's, I've... You don't know anything about I, him. <laughs> he's listened, running for president. I listened to him on Joe Rogan's podcast, and it was entertaining and fun to listen to. Um, but I don't, I don't care. I, I wish I did. Yeah. I, wish I, did. I you feel am, like no matter who's president, it's not going to change your life much. I, it's going to change it. But it's not going to change it. In what it. ways? Finan- it's not going to change maybe. it. Yeah, financially most yeah. of the time. It's not going to change it to a level that I need to be mean to somebody. Sure, I'm, absolutely, I've never, right? I've never, I've never seen that happen. Well, I've never seen it happen because we're all struggling with the same stuff regardless of who is in charge. I feel like politics is similar to, you know, back, back, you know, when gays were less, um, accepted being gay was less accepting. Um, back then, how do I, <laughs> how do I explain this? Uh, you would have all these like Republican senators being against it, but then all of a sudden their son turned out to be gay. And then they're like, Oh, well, being gay is not so bad. Well, I feel I feel like 
it's like that now with Republicans and Democrats and whether you believe in, in climate change, whether you believe in vaccines or, you know, whatever, right? It, it feels like that. It's like once you, it, w when you finally know somebody that was affected, injured by the vaccine, then you're like, okay, maybe vaccines aren't perfect, right? And But until then, people... They, they have their opinions and they, they stick to those hard line opinions. Um, and I guess my point in saying all this is I've just learned that everybody has a, a personal experience. So don't be so quick to oh yeah have a hard line uh, opinion yourself, you know? Yeah. Uh, Everything changes. My opinion always changes, um, almost always in five minutes, you know? Things make me so mad when I hear this didn't happen. What? What? That was supposed to happen, you know? But if I just like wait five minutes, breathe, all right, this didn't happen. All right, what's going to happen now? What's reality? Reality is we got to do, we got to adapt to this. And, and, and I feel, and I'm, no, I'm by no means a perfect person and I don't always react in the best way. Um, I, I often, think, man, I really wish I should have said this to this person in a, you know, not, not in a mean way, but like, I should have been like more open and loving to this person, really let them know. Or, you know, like I'll be thinking about that after I have an interaction with a friend, like after we do this podcast, I'll be like, man, we should have talked about, about the Mohawk or something, right? About the Mohawk. It's, sexy, ain't it? it's, it's great. I love it. I, I I really enjoyed your recent haircut. So there we go. That's good. Thank you. Appreciate good it. Stuff. I, you know, and, and I say it's politics that I don't like and what it's doing, but it's, it's, I think that's just because it's so overwhelming right now, because I feel that same way about a lot of stuff. You know, you were talking about like, um, the acceptance of like gay people. Mm -hmm. It, to me, I, I never cared. Yeah. Like, I don't like now if I saw like two big burly dudes kissing, my first reaction would be like, whoa, <laughs> you know, but yeah. I mean, like, what can you expect? I grew up in the South. Like, that's not a common thing. So if I saw it, it would take me back a little. Yeah. But uh, that's just because it's not normal here. Right. Sure. But when it comes down, but you to don't that, care. I don't, like, I don't care. Yeah. Um, I got a job. All right. So when same. But can I say one thing? I don't I'm the same way. It is kind of ridiculous that it's like shoved into your face now. Like, like, I, yeah, I don't like that. Like on TV shows where there's out of context, gay things happening. You're just like, there's no, out of, I mean, there's also not, there's not a lot of out of context, non gay things happening too. you know? So like, it's so come weird. on, let's just like be normal about it. Like it's, it's, and, 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 I wonder, I should ask some gay, I have a few gay friends. I should ask them what they think about the random gay, just somebody who's popping up randomly gay, like for no reason. That's a good thought. I haven't thought about that. Yeah, yeah that's a good thought. Yeah. I, when when Katie got pregnant with the twins, I knew immediately like, oh, I don't make enough money. So I went to <laughs> my boss and I was like, hey, uh, my wife's pregnant and I need a promotion. So we got about six months to make that happen. I was just honest about it. I was like, I got to have a promotion. Yeah. And, and I got it. Like, she was like, yeah, for sure. You, you're worth it. Let's, let's do it. And I got a promotion, but I also got a second job and I was like, I'm going to work this second job until she has the baby. That way we are just kind of like, you just know, in case, just getting, getting money up. And let me tell you where I started working. You ready for this bath and body works? Yeah. I worked in a bath and I had the apron. I was selling soaps. Like I was making it happen. Right. Um, so my boss at Bath and Body Works, super, super cool guy. His name was Marty. Now, Marty was obviously gay. He, he just was. Mm -hmm. And he pulled me to the side at the beginning. It was the weirdest thing, man. Um, I mean, like I noticed it, but I did other than that, I didn't really think about it because I'm, I, I guess I'm selfish. Like it ain't bothering me. I don't, I don't care. Like whatever, do your thing. And he pulls me to the side and he goes, Hey, I just want to, I want to ask you a question. Is it, does it bother you that I'm gay? And I'm like, are you planning on touching me? And he goes, no. And I go, then no, I don't 
long as you don't touch me, we're good. Like if you start touching on me, then it's gonna, it's gonna bother me a little bit, right? But I was like, I don't, I don't care. Like who cares? It, Are you scared that it might move if he touches you? No. <laughs> don't to me. You, know, you don't want it to move. Yeah, it's, I didn't want it to touch me. Have you ever gotten a professional massage, Bob? Uh no. I was gonna ask, was it by a man or a woman? No, I've never, never done that. That's you got to think about that. You don't want, you don't want it to move if it's a man, right? Like, because you're not gay, so yeah. not that there's anything wrong with that. But you like women. You, you're attracted to females. No, 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 no. I like a woman. You like your wife. Yeah, yeah. Don't, don't you get me in trouble? Oh, oh <laughs> I, I see. I, I didn't realize we we're not living I, in reality. I like her. No, I understand what you're saying. Yes. Um, no, I'm against massages. I don't like them. It would not. Would you be? Would you say you'd be tickled, or or would it feel weird? No, no, no. It, it hurts. Hurts. I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's supposed I, so to feel I like relaxing. It's supposed to. I like. No, I don't like getting massages. I like my feet to be rubbed because my because I walk a ton. Mm -hmm. uh, I like my feet to get massaged, but everything else, I don't. I don't like it. Does Katie? Uh... Hook you up with that, or what? Like feet rubs? Yeah, yeah. I should rub my feet, but particularly my right foot. I'm having, I'm having an issue with my right foot right now, and she takes care of. That's it, so. pure. That's pure love, right there. Yeah, yeah. I hope my you're... feet are terrible, dude. I got little talons come off my toenails. <laughs> and stuff. It's awful. It's. I have fingernail. I have fingernail polish on my toes right now. Um, during Christmas, we had the elf in our house. Mm-hmm. And the elf painted my toenails one night, and I just, I don't know, I haven't <laughs> cleaned it off yet. It's been like two months or something. Have you heard that the elf is like a psyop? No. Elf on the shelf is like a psyop. So it's like... I don't know what that means. What is psyop? A psychological operation. It's like a thing to like see what people do, what decisions they make, why, what they're afraid of, what they... You know, so like with the elf on the shelf, it's like to see what, what kids do when they know they're being watched all the time because the idea is elf on the shelf is constantly watching everything they do and it's going to know no matter what. And so that's the idea is like, that's big brother. The government's always watching you pretty much always. I mean, there are places outdoors in certain smaller towns where there's no cameras, but if you're in a major city, there's cameras everywhere. You're, you're oh, so so they're making a pair. They're making a parallel sort of uh, situation where okay, this is this is preparing the kid, preparing the child for adulthood, where you are, you have like elf on a shelf in the sky, right? I'm not what, saying it's true I, or I believe it. I'm just saying that's a thing people. I'm I'm about. not prepared to talk about it publicly. <laughs> but when, when when we get to the end of this, I'll share a camera, okay, piece of camera information from you that'll that'll be like, yeah, I knew, I knew everything I was saying was true. Oh. I know, <laughs> right. I'm in I'm in the industry, man. Um, let me, let me ask you one more thing. This is no, it has nothing to do with me. my my segments of changing to subjects are ridiculous. Uh, right. You're a, you're a father, yeah. Um, I bring this up because there were there were two things. One. Uh, I thought the last episode we recorded was episode 400, but it turns out I did another one. But this is like my fifth time being on your your show. Um, episode 400, I started listening to it today because I was thinking to myself, let me listen to it and figure out if there was something else I wanted to bring up that I get, didn't get to do. But uh, on that episode, you talked about Sailor and that she had just started guitar lessons with Parker. Is that right? Yeah. From uh, Tumbledown? Jack Parker. Yeah, yeah, Jack Parker. Yeah. And then, uh, by the way, that episode was released March 7th, like 22. Oh. When is this one going to come out? It's going to come out like almost the same date, right? March 4th. March 4th, it's pretty close, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but when you, when we talked, she was just beginning to like do music and stuff, right? And then you released this freaking song of hers. Oh, wait, March 11th, sorry. March 11th. March 11th. Yeah. But, okay, sorry. So, yeah, the song. Lin with Linoleum, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. It's so weird that I was like, oh, by the way, when we recorded that day, that was when Russia attacked Ukraine for the first time. 
That is wild. That's that yeah. war has been going on that long. That long. You brought years. it up on the episode. Yeah, he's like, yeah, it's been a heavy day. Uh. <laughs> yeah, you're like it's, just what I want to talk about. It's so wild that I I, I kind of checked that out today, and then and then the tank think like just a few weeks before or a week before, you know, you released that song with her, and it's flipping incredible. It's on my daughter's playlist, by the way. She uh, she added it to her playlist. She loves it. Awesome. I, I, I played it for her. And I was like, we got to do stuff like this. But neither one of us are on the same talent level that you are. So we're not going to show anybody our stuff. But, uh, it, it, you know, it is what it is. But I wanted to I wanted to share something with you that I did with my kid um, and, and get your thoughts on it. So my six year old, he's taking showers, quote unquote, by himself now. OK, I, I still have to, like, guide him and and basically just go, you got to hurry up. Because yeah. he'll be in the shower and he'll stay in there if we let him for forty minutes. Yeah. Right? Well, the other night the <laughs> My other son night does that too. It's God. it's awful, right? Uh, <laughs> like, like, dude, what are hurry you, it up. <laughs> you don't have that many parts. Like just scrub them and get out. Um, but no, the other night we were doing shit because we have three kids, man, and they're they're six, nine, and nine. So trying to just rotate showers every single night is it's a task, it's a job. And this one night, it was like, it's got to be quick. I can't let you stay in here for forty minutes tonight. Like we've got things to do, we got to move. And so I was doing two showers at once. I let him go into our shower, and then I think my daughter and the other son was in the other shower. But they had the kids' soap and shampoo in there, so he didn't have that in there. So I was like, hey, you're going to use mine tonight. It's going to be okay. Well, I kind of played a little bit of a joke on him. I took that. I took my soap, and I gave him no warning. And I was like, I'm going to wash your hair tonight. And I, I scrubbed his hair, and then I go, you need to get the you, – you don't – you got to listen to me so it doesn't burn your eyes. Because they're used to stuff that like doesn't burn their eyes and whatnot. I was like, "This is gonna burn your eyes." Make sure you pay attention. Gave him no heads up, and uh, you know he rinses his hair out. And then uh, the next thing was, you know, you got to wash your body. Well, I helped him through it because I'm trying to do quick, right? He's only six. I wash his body with my soap, you know, a little scrunchy thing, and it's just a bar of soap. It's like the kind of soap that you wash and it pulls all the oils off, right? Like it gets you real clean. Well, I just had this weird thought, and I was like, I, I think I know how I can get him out of the shower fast. As soon as I was done scrubbing, I took my hands, like I was panicked, and put them under the water and was like. And I saw him looking at me like, what is he doing? And then I turned to him, and I just go, hurry up and rinse that off before it starts to burn. And I just closed the curtain and just <laughs> walked away. And let me tell you what, dude, he was out of that shower in like three minutes. It was it was perfect. Nice. And, you know, and then I told him I was just messing with him. But like sometimes as a parent, you just got to like, OK, we got to trick him into it because life's going to keep moving. And, you know, like, oh, all you want to eat is chicken nuggets every single night. What is wrong with you? Yeah, yeah, you gotta, yeah. You got to spread that out. A little bit. What if he starts screaming in the shower? Ah, 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 it burns. Ah, uh, you know, that's and you're like. Some- Wait, does it really I'll, burn? <laughs> I'll, pay, I'll pay for the therapy appointments later. <laughs> we got things to do right now, man. We got Love things it. to do. But, uh, but <sighs> yeah, circling back, just to just to finish this thought, man, I was listening to that book, Ascension, mm-hmm. at like 5.30 in the morning, because that's when I would take off from work. It was a good book. Listening to it, I, I could see how trying to read it would be ridiculous. But listening to it, it was really good, man. And when you started finding out there were like people from another dimension mixed in, Mm -hmm. and then they were going through portals, and there were monsters that were dragging the ground and can hear your thoughts, and people were dying. I'm like listening to that at 5.30 in the morning trying to start my day. So I would get to work, and like my heart's pounding. I'm like, what am I doing right now? I don't even want to like listen to this, but me and Mike might talk about it one day. Let me keep going. And I, I checked out this whole book, and then I messaged you. was like, I finished it. And you were like, I didn't finish it. I was like, you got to be <laughs> kidding me, dude. Did, really? Did you ever listen to Project Hail Mary? No. That book, I finished that book. That was, that's, that was one of my favorite books in the last couple of years I've read. Project yeah? Hail Mary. Uh, I can't remember the author, but 
it's a space book. It's about it's about a space guy, a spaceman, and it's just really, really good, really well done. It's like I guess it would take place in the near future, kind of like a believable future, like ten, twenty years from now. Get that one, right. Hail right. Project Hail Mary. It is so good, and it is not. Uh, I, I love you, brother. I do. It's not as it's not scary. We we've been friends since 2016. I you're you're like the only person I text. Um, as a matter of fact, Katie tells me sometimes she's like, "What are you doing messing with him?" And I'm like, "What are you talking about?" She's like, "He's gonna get mad." And I'm like, "You know, maybe maybe we will." Because I send you ridiculous stuff sometimes, but the way that yeah. I think about it is this podcast is not going to last forever. Like something's going to happen one day when I don't do this with you anymore. Whether that's you decide to end the podcast or I don't put the music stuff where you asked me to put it. Like whatever, <laughs> whatever that is, right? You call yeah. me in the middle of the night calling me fat. Like whatever happens, it's going to end eventually. So I might as well just have fun with it. You know what I mean? And that's that's why I text you weird stuff. Only if you're very um, sensitive. But yeah, I mean, I, I didn't actually call you, but my assistant did. Your assistant Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Like, how are you going to have somebody else tell me I'm fat? Like, that's ridiculous, Mike. What are you talking about? This is crazy. Um, Lizzo in training. I lost track of what the point I was getting to. Um, what were we talking about? Sorry. You were just complimenting me and saying that it, <laughs> yeah, the podcast that's, might that's end how you, That's someday. how you live your life. The co- podcast might end someday, and oh you know. yeah, so I just you know I just I I enjoy being your friend, and um, it's it's a fun time. I like doing weird stuff. Oh no, being joined. I appreciate you. I appreciate you uh, taking the time to make things happen, and I like to know normal people. It's kind of nice. Thank you for assuming that I'm a normal person. <laughs> okay. I appreciate. That. I meant like normal job, normal family. Um, not that you're not weird. You're definitely weird. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a true thing. Yeah. That's a real thing. In, a well, good, I, in the best way possible though. Uh, speaking of that, um, I'm assuming you want to wrap things up. We've been going for an hour and 25 minutes. Good long episode. I want to insert something that you talk about. So you always talk about me and Katie and say, oh, they like butt stuff. They do butt stuff. All <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. You like you say something. Like, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I want to explain that to people. Okay, go ahead. I think. Why do you like butt stuff so much and well, talk about see, it? That's that's. The I mean, way you say it confuses people. Well, I don't mind that you like butt stuff. I mean, I like butt stuff. Stop saying things like that. What are you talking about? Like, I don't mind if you like butt stuff. That's not. That's not. You're giving everybody the wrong idea. Okay. <laughs> I know. What we're talking, what we do is we think very, very easily farts are funny, right? Like that's the basis of of humor. Potty humor. Yeah. Kind right. of. We, it's funny to talk about butts. That's, yeah. that, that's all we're getting at, right? So I thought what I could do to kind of explain my way out of you telling everybody I like butt stuff is like I came with a few butt facts just just for you. Okay. Love this, it. This is what we can end on, okay? Some of this stuff I don't even understand. Uh, Here we go. First of all, humans are one of the few mammals with a permanently enlarged buttocks. Permanently enlarged. Yeah, permanently enlarged. So I guess whenever it it, it, it enlarges on you, it's just, it's there. It's there. It, It It ain't going back down. Apparently, there's other mammals that their butts go, poof, here I am. Let's have fun. And then once the fun's over, it's gone. Wow. Interesting. Not us. Not us. We keep going. We keep it up. Okay. Uh, sitting for prolonged periods can lead to a condition known as dead butt syndrome. Dead All butt right? syndrome. Is that causing, when your butt falls asleep? Yep. Causing numbness and <laughs> discomfort in the buttocks that can last <laughs> for unknown periods depending on your DNA and your body type. Uh, the term butt is believed to have originated from the Middle English word meaning buttock, which simply means the end. The end. That's it. The end. Not uh, bell end, just the end. <laughs> right. And, and then here's the last one. 
And okay. we're not going to go into details. I'm just going to tell you the fact. <laughs> and if people want to search it on their own, that's the reason I'm here. To right. give you something to go after in life. Here we go. Uh, ancient... No, no, we're, I'm reading the wrong thing. Uh, oh, here we go. Ancient Romans used to believe that the left buttock was uh, associated with evil, and the right one was associated with good fortune. Yeah, that's it. We like butt stuff. That's it. I'm gonna, that's I'm gonna search that myself. I'm gonna figure out. I want to know why they thought that. Like, what was going on with the left butt cheeks? And they were like, that's evil. But the right one? Hmm. I, uh, I can't even think of why they would think that. I'd give my left butt cheek to, you know, get on the boat or whatever. I don't know. Well, you know what? This episode has been everything I wanted and much, much more. All right. I love it. It's been fun. Great yes, conversation. Um, we learned a lot about each other. Um, people... Somebody's probably mad after this episode. <laughs> that that happens. All and time. most, but most of the listeners are probably like, "Yeah, it seems about right." I kind of figured. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Bob McKnight. Everybody, peace out. Uh, make sure you guys go check out mxpx.com. Listen to Linoleum. Add it to your playlist, like uh, Bob did. His, his Bob's daughter did. Um, if you are you having trouble finding it, you're probably looking for it on MXPX streaming. It's actually under my name, Mike Herrera. So uh, linoleum under Mike Herrera on all the streaming sites. And then it's actually on the MXPX YouTube. You can go to there and get it. Uh, find a way home. Still our new album. Please listen. Please add it to your music library, your playlists. Um, try to listen to it at least once a day. Is that asking too much? At least listen to like a few of your favorite songs off of it once a day. There you go. That's reasonable. Look at me being reasonable. All right. That's it. Go to mxpx.com and buy some socks. Come see us in Atlanta or Orlando. Those next two shows coming up are the only ones that aren't sold out. Um, Mexico City may may not be sold out yet either. Some forty one MXPX Tari's. Oh my god! Every song Blanco. they put out on that new album is so good. Yeah, man, I can't wait to hear the the full. Holy record. crap! They're on a world tour right now. We'll meet up with them in Mexico, but uh, I'm I'm happy for them. We have tickets, and I'm giddy. Nice. They're playing in uh, North Carolina with um, the Interrupters. Oh, right on. So okay, that'll be Katie. Good. Katie loves the Interrupters, so that's why I got it from. Yep. Monday. Awesome. I interrupted your outro. I'm sorry. There you go. Do the thing where you say cheers and we'll, we'll <laughs> win. <laughs> no, it is. This is, that is just letting you, letting you talk, my friend. All good. All right. Much love. Say it. I want to see it. I want to see you say it. Say, say cheers. Cheers. <laughs>